Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler. I'm your host. I'm a Silver Fox advisor and also the founder of One Best Consult. I think we've lined up a wonderful show for you today. I hope you enjoy it. And as always, if you have a question about something we discuss, you got a comment about what we're doing, or you got a question about your business, uh, business challenge particularly, if you've got something, I'd be glad to take a look at it. Just send me an email directly here to the studio at rick, R-I-C-K, at IRLoneStar.com. Love to get those inquiries, love responding and connecting with people. Well, the weekly business hours where Montgomery County and now businesses throughout the world come to talk about the latest in business news, ideas to improve their business, and to be part of conversations that can really make a difference in their business. And before I go any further, I want to remind you that this show is broadcast live on YouTube. So if you want to watch us as well as listen to us, go to YouTube, type in the weekly business hour. It'll take you to our page. You click on it, and you're watching as well as listening. Well, let's start with a little local business news today. An uh, article this past week uh, gave a ranking of cities around the United States where the traffic, uh, most hours spent by the average commuter in traffic in Houston was seventh, the Houston area was seventh on that list. Uh, that is something that impacts business in here in Montgomery County, even though we are quote unquote not in Houston, but we have a lot of, of our friends and folks, neighbors that commute into Houston for their jobs and then come home. And if you own a business that serves these folks on a residential basis as consumers, then you're impacted by the length of that commute. It is estimated that we've added another 12 minutes to the commute of the average commuter around the greater Houston area. So you have people leaving earlier and coming home later. If you're in a retail business, if you serve these people, you might have to adjust your hours of operation. If you're providing services at their homes, Another consideration to take in place, that these folks are being kept in traffic, their routines changed, and your ability to meet them, to serve them, has changed. So keep in mind the commutes get longer, but I think that's a wonderful opportunity in many ways because people are going to want to live and work closer to home. So consider that. It's getting worse, not better, but that can be an advantage to you if you think about it and put it to work for your business. The show today is going to be sponsored by OneBestConsult.com. Uh, that's a website uh, that I founded. It's meant to be a community for small business people to come and share ideas, to ask questions uh, anonymously, if you will. Also, where if you'd like to engage me professionally to work with you as a mentor, advisor, consult with you on your business and how to make it work better for you and your family, this is where you go. So I encourage you, just take a look at OneBestConsult.com where we specialize in common sense business advice. And a reminder too, email us during the show. I mentioned it earlier, but don't forget, email us during the show if you've got a question for one of our guests or one of the segments we're in the middle of. If you email it to rick at irlonestar.com, I'll do my best to get your question on the air so we can address it then and there. Well, at this point, it gets real easy. As I say every week, just sit back, Grab your pad and pencil and get ready to take notes as we talk about everything business right here on the Weekly Business Hour. And today, I'm very pleased to say that we have John Van Orden. He's the owner of Mr. Handyman, The Woodlands. He's in the studio today to talk about his business and his business success. His business has been voted the best in the Woodlands for 10, 10 consecutive years. So this fellow must know how to run a business. John, welcome to the, the show. Thanks, Rick. Appreciate being here. Well, I appreciate you taking time. Like I said, you obviously uh, know a little bit about how to build and run a business, and I hope uh, that during the course of our conversation we can share some of that wisdom uh, with our listeners. Uh, to get kicked off, give us a little bit of your business background before you got into business for yourself with Mr. Handyman. I spent uh, 17 years working for a major oil company. And uh, that gave me quite a, a wide range of business skills. I'm an engineer by degree, but uh, I'd like to say I got some of my business savvy from working for Major Oil. Well, that's interesting. Uh, working for a large corporation, you were able to transfer or translate some of that education, that background experience into running a small business. That's right. You know, that's a lot of folks miss that, and I think that's very important. Well, why did you start Mr. Handyman? Let's get down to the nuts and bolts. Well, 
I love the community that we live in. And I did a lot of projects around the house myself because uh, I just never felt comfortable with the companies that were out in, in the area. And so that motivated you to maybe help others out it, at the same time. It sure did. I, I reached a point in my shell career that uh, I was either going to stay in it for the long term to retirement, or I would be a perfect time when I was 40 years old to start another venture. And Mr. Handyman was the appropriate business because we specialize in the smaller 500 to $2,000 type projects. And Starting a business is difficult, and if we started a business doing $5,000 jobs, uh, people probably wouldn't be as comfortable with using you for the first time. Well, that makes a lot of sense. You've got that, if you will, low entry level to work with people. Mr. Handyman, it's a franchise. Uh, anything particular about that franchise that drew you to them? It was a family. I really felt that way Every, from all of the other franchise owners I spoke with during the due diligence process, as well as the corporate folks. They really cared about the owners, and it wasn't consumed by how much money uh, we're going to get from our owners. It was more how do we support them to be successful because their success is going to make the brand successful. Well, that sounds like the right connection for anybody that's looking for a franchise. That's exactly right. And you have to talk to the other owners because that's really where we grow is uh, we have teams that get together on a constant basis, sometimes even monthly conference calls, to help each other solve problems. And it's really great to have other business owners in your business that understand what you're going through and can help you solve them. You know, in my career, in particular in the show, I've, I've interviewed a number of franchise owners, different industries, uh, but that's one of the things that sort of gets forgotten, I think, in those discussions is uh, the camaraderie or having that group available. You're not out there by yourself. That's right. It makes a big difference, doesn't it? Sure does. Well, let's talk about what Mr. Handyman really is. I mean, we haven't defined the business. It sounds like handyman, right, like you did in your own home, fix this, fix the leaky toilet, fix... Tell us, what is Mr. Handyman? The name does us an injustice because we do so much more than the honeydew list. And, you know, we're not jack of all trades, masters of none. We, we have a team of technicians that are very skilled in multiple areas, but we can provide the quality that a specialist can provide. Um, we just make it easier for our customers to only make one phone call to get all of those top quality projects done. So we'll do everything from caulking a shower, and this morning we started a bathroom remodel. So you're kind of soup to nuts, if you will, as I talked about my soup to nuts conversation, yeah. because from caulking to doing a total remodel obviously pushes that price tag up a little bit. Well, and we started slow. You know, we did not expand into large multi-day jobs until we knew we were capable of delivering at a very high level. Um, we're a customer service business, first of all. We just happen to, to specialize in home improvement and repair. And we want to develop relationships with our customers to where we're not asking them to do projects. They're coming to us and asking us if we would do something outside of our comfort zone because they trust us and they know the quality is there. So we, our customers helped us grow. You know, it's funny. I'm, I'm sitting here listening to you, and I, I'm thinking – homeowner and projects and a honeydew list and whatever we call it. I don't know anyone who's ever owned a home that doesn't begin to accumulate a list of caulking and fixing and putting a door back up and or replacing a door. I mean, they get bigger and bigger. Right. Uh, you, you basically take the list for me as a homeowner and take care of it. Yeah, and a lot of our customers will have a running list. You know, they start as soon as our technician's walking out the door, they're starting their list for the next time that they need us to come out. And to your point, there are many, many projects lists that we all have, and we just don't have the opportunity to do them. Um, or more importantly, rather spend time with family than have to do those things on the list. And that's, that's we're here to do that for you. You know, the other thing I would add to that is the expertise. I, I, I like to do projects. I grew up in a home that my dad, that was his downtime, which was not much in those days because six days a week working. But he did things, but he had a background in carpentry and different mm -hmm. things. But sometimes what I do and what a professional can do, even on a small repair, 
<laughs> it's apples and oranges in a big way. That's exactly right. All of our technicians have a minimum 20 years experience, and we've been true to that from, from the start. It's so important to have the expertise, but in addition to the years of experience, not everyone's blessed with the hands to perform the, the, the level of detail and the types of jobs that um, we ask our technicians to perform. I like to say I have the know-how, i just not blessed with the can-do. That's what's great and to have the team of technicians that can do all that stuff for you. You know, I'm intrigued a little bit, not to prolong this part of our discussion or conversation, but I was looking at the list of things, that you, examples that you actually, I mean, you hang a picture, you hang a mirror. Uh, I've, I've got this vision. Your guy comes in and uh, your technician comes into a, uh, someone's home and literally takes a list if I need a new picture hung or the door needs to be adjusted because it's dragging. I mean, on and on and on. Yeah. And think about, close your eyes, and, and you can visualize the van. The vans that our technicians drive in, it's a full-size Chevy van, and it's stacked with tools. There's no materials hardly at all in the van because there's just so many tools. Every job needs a special tool. And, you know, over 20, 30, even 40 years, some of our technicians have accumulated thousands of tools they can't even fit it all in the van um, so the night before they review their work orders for the next day to make sure they've got the right tools in the van they prioritize the job to make sure that they're doing the tasks in a logical order and we also minimize the trips to the store how many projects have we all started at home and 20 trips to the hardware store later the project's done so they do a lot of planning before they even show up to the customer's house. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Let's kind of jump into, uh, you know, expansion. I mean, you have taken a business. You mentioned you started with the small projects mm -hmm. uh, under $500 perhaps and then moved up and expanded, still doing the small projects. But I encourage all my clients uh, and businesses in general when I speak or whatnot to look for new opportunities. Tell us about the new opportunities that over the past 10 plus years you have brought into your business. Yeah, there's different ways of looking at expansion and we chose the geographical route. We want to still provide the smaller project lists uh, for consumers, but we want to expand the geography. So we moved out into the Conroe, Montgomery. Uh, we go as far north as, as South Willis. And uh, we just see that's where the opportunities are. That's where a lot of our existing customers started to move. We moved to uh, Wood Forest ourselves to, you know, enjoy what Montgomery County has to offer up on the north side, closer to the lake. And, and the lake now is becoming more year-round residents. And uh, we, we see great opportunities to help service customers in that area as well. You know, one of the things in, in looking at your website, you, you uh, I guess, became a specialist, I don't know if that's the right word, or certified, I don't know if that's mm -hmm. the right word, aging in place, uh, a big market out there. There certainly uh, is. Uh, tell us about that as far as that was an, obviously an expansion of services as well. And the National Home Builders Association, th there is a certification course that um, you're required to take in order to become a certified aging in place specialist. And the knowledge you gain in that course is unbelievable, and it's just the tip of the iceberg. And uh, it, it really shows you the need and how folks right now are trying to stay in their homes longer. And um, each year you're in there, it's harder to move out. And uh, we're doing more and more projects. And, and, and you can phase them. You know, as we age, you know, there, you don't need to do a whole remodel of your home. But you just do it logically and always think about what the end game may be. And you can start doing smaller projects just to make the home safer and more comfortable for us to live in as we age. Do you offer any kind of planning for folks? Because like you mentioned, you do a, a phased-in kind of thing over a period of time, which makes a lot of sense as we grow older to kind of phase in to make sure we get critical things first. And do you offer any kind of planning services? We have a home assessment that we can perform for uh, our potential customers or existing customers, and it will help work hand in hand with the homeowner on a short-term and a long-term plan because um, every home is different and everyone's needs are different. 
Well, and that makes a lot of sense, and I think that's a great opportunity to not only expand your services, just make an observation real quick, because uh, we're running up against uh, our time in the first segment, but uh, the idea that I am basically going to be a generational company. I, I begin with you in your first home, theoretically, and I can work with you time-wise uh, in the home or another home, whatever, to aid you on out in the home, which is becoming a, a big deal yes. from what I understand. People are, the numbers are growing rapidly. And we look at it as a lifelong relationship with our customers. And we're starting to do a little bit of that generational um, um, involvement with customers that we start working with the son or the daughter, and then the parents start using our service, or vice versa. Um, and it's in this community, you see three generations living together just down the street from each other. It's, it's kind of neat to see families coming back together again. Yeah, it's a wonderful market opportunity as well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as I hinted, uh, we're at the end of our first segment. I can't, John, I can't believe the conversation has gone so quickly. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with John, talk about future growth, uh, how to evaluate it, and also talk about the difference in Mr. Handyman and its competitors. How do they stand out in the market? So please stay with us. We'll be right back with you. Business ideas and news you can use, join us on the weekly business hour every Monday at 11 a.m. on Lone Star Community Radio. A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936 647 3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. We have the safest food supply in the world. Strict laws and regulations restrict the usage of hormones, antibiotics, and pesticides within our food supply. Production agriculture practices and technologies such as the use of GMOs, which is not any more or less risky than conventional crop production has allowed American farmers to produce more food on less acres in environmentally sound ways. Find out more online at pathtoplate.tamu.edu. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make lives better. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. It's all business talk on the weekly business hour every Monday at 11 a.m. right here on Lone Star Community Radio. You are listening to the weekly business hour live here in the heart of Montgomery County in Conroe, Texas. And we are visiting with a friend of ours now, I guess, John Van Orden. Uh, and I guess, John, hopefully you're a friend of the station. You've got a wonderful story and I appreciate you sharing it with us. Uh, I want to mention to everybody that uh, the show itself will be in a podcast form as we do every week. And it'll be available on Wednesday of the week. Uh, they're posted all over the social media, posted here at the station at IRLoneStar.com. Just click on talk shows, drop down to daytime show, the weekly business hour, and you can listen to the most current as well as past shows at your convenience. Well, John, when we went to break, we were talking about growth. Uh, you obviously made a big step when you took the business from, quote unquote, the Woodlands into the rest or some of the rest of Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. What, if any, are your future plans to grow the business? Well, we still think the recipe is is right for us, is is focusing on those two-hour to two-day type projects. And as we want to grow, we're going to expand our footprint. Not quite sure where the next logical uh, step is geographically, but we just want to keep delivering the same product, or in this case products, to a larger number of people. Well, let me ask you this. If it's not, again, I understand proprietary information, but you expanded into, into the aging area. Uh, which I happen to believe is a really good potential market. Uh, I'm one of those. Yeah. Uh, we built a house yeah. to age into and had a specialist go through our plan. So right. we have all three foot wide doorways throughout the house. Um, but areas as far as products or services that you might provide, anything 
kind of in the queue now for the future? Yeah, we'd like to get into the preventative maintenance arena. Um, most folks react to their maintenance needs. Um, so we've developed a quarterly maintenance program. It, it, it's really developed to help our aging population with projects that they may be more uncomfortable with, uh, changing uh, batteries in smoke detectors, changing light bulbs to um, knowing when and what type of filters to replace for your AC systems and your refrigerators. But when you think about it, that pretty much anybody's home would require that type of service. We just need to develop a robust quarterly maintenance program and figure out a way to get it out into the marketplace. Yeah, that's an exciting thing. I have some friends up in the East Coast that they have a program in the city they live in that uh, offers that. Well, let me ask you, I'm going to look for a handyman. I'm out there searching probably social media, Google, mm -hmm. uh, whatever. In my day it was the Yellow Pages, right? And yeah. that's all gone away. But I'm looking for someone. And why do I choose Mr. Handyman over one of your competitors? What makes you different? It's the trust, the expertise that our team delivers, but most importantly, it's the customer service. You want to deal with someone who is in the business to develop a relationship with. You know, we, we want to be the go-to person for everything. And if we don't handle it in-house, we want to help you find who, what the right service is to help you with a job that we can't do. Well, I think that's important, too. And a customer service, I grew up personally steeped in it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, got in the car with my dad on Sundays to go down and open up to, for a customer who had an emergency and needed help. Um, so I, I really began to understand uh, it's one thing to say it, another to deliver it, but I saw it being delivered firsthand on a regular basis. What does that mean to your business customer service? I mean, you mentioned helping them solve their problem. That's a great example. What, deep down with your people, if I was to ask one of them, what does customer service mean? Caring. You know, you can't fake caring and compassion, and you, you either are that way or you're not. Uh, in our culture, we've developed a thing called the Mr. Handyman way, and that's to carry the con customer from the initial advertisement, whatever that media may be, all the way through the phone call to scheduling the appointment to doing the work, then the follow-ups afterwards. So we are very consistent by developing this process and everybody on the team is committed to making sure they're doing their part and then also making sure the other team members are doing their part as well. And uh, it all comes back to just taking care of the customer. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Now, you mentioned you hire technicians. You mentioned qualification-wise, 20-plus years generally experience. But how do you build or foster a culture of customer service with these folks that you bring in? It's give, empowering our employees to make the right decision. It's, it, it's easy to say, but hard to do. Um, you know the old saying, just do the right thing. And, but always having the right thing in mind, some businesses handcuff you from doing what you think the right thing is to do. And uh, it, it starts with a trust within our own organization. And that's my employees trusting me as much as me trusting them that we're going to make the right decisions, but I'm going to stand behind the decisions that they make. And uh, we've found a lot of success in, and we're still working on it, but in this empowerment that we're passing into the organization and where we've developed our seven um, you know, values that we have developed and and as a team have agreed that these are the core values that we're going to live by but more importantly these are the values we're going to use to make decisions and if we follow those values at the end of the day we're going to make the right decision for our customers you know i want to make sure our listeners hear the fact that you develop these values with the team meaning i assume all your employees yes that's a very important step to take that congratulate you for doing that Sometimes we don't want to hear what the employees think, right? That, that's exactly right. <laughs> um, and it's funny that the, the first notes that I took to kind of come up with the first draft, I, I just looked at one of our employees that had been with us, oh boy, less has been there over 11 years, and started looking at what the, our relationship is because um, Les grew with the company. And um, what he's a big reason why where we're at right now. 
and uh, it, it's his values. So, uh, so a lot of those core values are, are lessons as well. L literally came right from the source, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Well, let me ask you, you, uh, you have a, uh, on your website and whatnot, you have some good customer stories. And I think uh, customer stories, yes, people put them up, really don't consider what they are. But you have, a, I'm sure can share with us a good story here real quick about where it really supports what you view as customer service. So give us a story. There's a lot of them out there, but uh, this was early on in, in our company's development. Um, had not been in business for maybe more than a year and one of our technicians showed up to a customer's house and she was obviously, you know, in a panic. And um, so first question, rather than having her sign her in or anything like that was, is everything okay? And she said, no, my dog got out and I can't find him. And so the next phone call we got was from our technician and he said, you know, I'm not gonna be able to start this job. I may not be able to do it. Um, our customer, she's lost her dog, we need to, find the dog so he's out there looking and I told my wife and I were working the business together at that time and um, I just got a phone call from our technician um, there's a dog that's missing and, and that just shut down the office and because at that time my wife Laura and I were the only two in the office and we jumped in the car and and we went out there to help the search and I can't even remember if we performed any service for that customer today or not but the, the main thing was is that we did find her dog, and um, that's, you know, that, that's a problem we solved. And it had nothing to do, do with actually commit, doing a service to her home in a handyman capacity. Yes, that was probably a zero revenue up, um, project, but it, it's, it's what we need to do for, for other people. Well, it makes sense. That's what Mr. Handyman the Woodlands is all about. So that is a wonderful connecting story. Finding these employees, 20 years experience, that's quite a requirement in any any field. How do you find, I mean, it's real challenging today to find any employees. Where do you find these folks and how do you attract them to the really good ones to be part of your business? One of the things we have in our favor today is um, a reputation of delivering a high level of service, customer loyalty, and, you know, it's easy for me to sell a future technician on a job opportunity with Mr. Handyman of the Woodlands because the, my team can tell them what it's like to service our customers every day. And, um, but it's still hard that, I mean, that skill pool is shrinking every day. And we've done things as early on, Craigslist, the green sheet, that stuff, that those meetings don't work as well anymore. Um, Social media is something that we're just starting and, and Facebook to try to uh, solicit uh, future technicians and um, office staff employees. As we continue to grow, we, we need to, to grow our team. And we're recruiting now, because uh, you always have to be recruiting, and uh, it's for the future growth. Um, there are a lot of, Indeed is, is probably the biggest source that we have um, for getting qualified candidates. There's there's a lot of other sources out there, but Indeed has delivered the highest percentage of qualified candidates to date. Well, two observations in what you just said. One is Indeed.com is today's. Previously, it was Craigslist, maybe the Green Tree. People, business people, business owners need to be aware that the, it, it changes. It's changing right. quick. And the second thing is, and I hope folks hear this, I read, that's why I want to repeat it, you're recruiting all the time. And I'm a huge believer, regardless of the size of your business, you're already always taking steps, in my opinion, monthly or quarterly at the very least, even if you don't need anybody. You put the net out, and boy, you might be surprised what comes up, uh, and you got to figure out a way to put them to work. Exactly, exactly. That, that forces you to grow a little bit faster. Yeah. And investing. I, it, recruiting used to be free. Um, but in addition to your time commitment, you have to be committed to put a budget aside every year to recruit. And you got to be willing to do that. And I agree with you. I, again, congratulate you. You've built, obviously, you know, John, we're out of time. You've built a wonderful business. One of the, the uh, certifications, if you will, of that accomplishment is that you, as I mentioned and when I introduced you, being the best in the Woodlands in your area, 10 years running, what has that done for the business as we kind of draw things to a close? 
Well, it's, it's just something to get excited about. And uh, we never want to, um, you know, relax. You know, we, we want to continue to improve and we want to always get better. So it's just uh, we, we don't expect not to receive a, a Best of the Woodlands Award. And, and as we move into Conroe, and, uh, we'd love to be the best of Conroe as well. Well, it makes a lot of sense. And obviously, you mentioned about hiring people. It draws the better people to your business and the better people stay in your business because you get that little award and other things that develop in part of that culture you have. Again, congratulations on building a really a successful business. Ladies and gentlemen, we are to the end of our interview and discussion with uh, John Van Orden. John, if folks want to reach out to you, ask you a business question, or perhaps engage your services, what's the best way for them to contact you? The best way for them to, to reach us is uh, www.mrhandyman.com. Um, there's a lot of information out there, but there's a contact. In addition to asking for services, there's also a contact us. So if they just have a question for, for me or any of my staff, um, feel free to give us a contact that way. Well, again, thanks so much for taking time to join us. And ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go to our bottom of the hour commercial break. Coming back, if you stick with the second half of the show, in the Do You Know segment, do you know how to face up to a difficult challenge? Uh, some interesting things took place this weekend and a great story that I think puts it into perspective of how to do that. And my one best consult tip of the week, has video caught your business in the act? And we'll discuss some of the pros and cons of using video in your business. So please stay with us. We'll be right back with you. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio. Broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. From the beginning, the main purpose of the Cooperative Extension Service has been to change human behavior by teaching people how to apply the results of scientific research. By utilizing a holistic, multi-level approach, Extension Family and Community Health Programs encourage health and well-being for everyone. Addressing values, concerns, and needs with reliable science-based information Extension programs help people lead healthier lives. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make their lives better. A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936 647 3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. Hispanic Chamber Connections with Dr. Carlos Sanchez, President of the Woodlands Conroe Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, featuring event announcements, member highlights, and more. Tuesdays at 1 p.m., broadcasting from the heart of Conroe, Texas on IRLoneStar.com and Conroe's FM 104.5. 106.1. What is homelessness? Have you seen parents struggle to find a job without having transportation or childcare? What about the children sleeping in cars with nothing to eat? Families shouldn't have to struggle to survive, and children should not be homeless. Family Promise of Montgomery County serves the needs of homeless families and their children. Learn about ways you can help and learn about partnership opportunities at www.familypromiseofmc.org or call our day center at 936-441-8778. A Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936-647-3776. 
to take your first step into the radio world. This is Rick, TRC. Every Tuesday on my show, Afternoons with Lone Star, from 3 to 7, I play back-to-back classic rock hits. That's right. I like to call it a two for Tuesday, or a three for whatever it is you'd like. Call the request line, 936-647-3776, or message me on Facebook, Afternoons with Lone Star, make a music request. That's right, you can do it. Here's what else. Go over to our website, IRLoneStar.com. Get the app on your phone. It's easy. You'll like it. It's all business talk on the weekly business hour every Monday at 11 a.m. right here on Lone Star Community Radio. You are listening to the weekly business hour. We're live today. This is Rick Schistler. I'm your host. Uh, we just finished what I think was a great interview with a very successful small businessman, John Van Orden, and the handyman, Woodland. So I encourage you to take a look at John's website, take a look at what they do. And again, he's open to receiving questions about business questions, about your business, his business. Uh, he obviously is a really sharp guy. It was a great interview. I enjoyed the conversation. So I encourage you reach out to John. And again, if you need services and you're here in Montgomery County, you need handyman services, um, which is definitely a soup to nuts business as well. Uh, I would encourage you to check out the handyman, the Woodlands. I want to remind you that if you're listening and you're a business owner here in the Conroe, Montgomery County area, uh, we accept sponsorships. Uh, so I encourage you contact me, Rick at IRLoneStar.com. That's IRLoneStar.com. Rick, my first name. And I'd be glad to talk to you about sponsoring the show. You can be right here every week with me, your message, your business, as a sponsor of the Weekly Business Hour. I want to thank our show sponsor for today, and that's OneBestConsult.com. I mentioned earlier in the show, it's a website I founded to create a community of like-minded small business people. Uh, We work on common sense business advice. We look to deliver solutions, not from a book, but using our common sense, along with experience and education. So if you'd like to join our community, get more information, you can sign up. We have a newsletter. We have video clips. We share things with each other. So please check out. That's one, the number one, bestconsult.com. Well, the do do you know segment, as I call it, do you know how to face up to a difficult challenge? Uh, That's a question that most of us face uh, more than once in our life. And I think it's an interesting question and how we handle that can be so important, obviously, not only in the final decision we make when we have that difficult challenge, not only in how we handle it, but how we process it, how we make it work for ourselves, and in many cases for our business, uh, even our families. Uh, And there was a situation this past weekend that caught my eye, and I started searching for information articles because a ton of articles were written and put out there. And that was a, a, a story that came out of the NFL, Professional Football League, Uh, about Oliver Luck. Oliver Luck, 29-year-old star quarterback uh, for the Indianapolis Colts. That's Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck. Boy, boy, I need all the help I can. I don't know why I said Andrew Luck. Excuse me. Mr. Luck, I apologize to you and your father. Andrew Luck, anyway, made a decision at 29, at the peak of his career as far as statistics, to retire. Uh, And this was a very difficult decision for him, but also one that he talked about when he was interviewed and gave a press conference, how he seemed it was the right thing for him to do. And he felt, already felt better about his decision. So I think it was latched on by many sports writers and others as a way to face a difficult decision to quit professional football, apparently giving up millions of dollars of future compensation. But please note, it's estimated he's earned a hundred million already. So I suspect any of us could live Uh, comfortably, assuming he's kept his money intact and invested wisely and not overspent uh, on what he has at the ripe old age of 29. But I think the point is that he is very comfortable. He made uh, gave up a sport and a job that he obviously loved because I don't think you can compete at that level unless you really enjoy and have a passion for what you do. And I think there's a lot of lessons in there. And one of the articles I came across uh, was was written by Justin Barrio. Uh, it was published in Inc.com this weekend, and I was reading that article, and I read several others along that line that talked about why 
the decision he made was, in the case of uh, Justin, he called it, here's why his decision is brilliant. Others had different titles, but there was a common theme. Uh, and the first step when you get a difficult decision, a difficult situation puts itself in front of you, is you need to take a quick pause. Uh, pause and reflect. Don't react. Uh, last week I had a situation personally, and I reacted. I didn't take that pause, and I made a mistake. And uh, it was not a major decision, but it was a, a difficult one. And I think that's great advice. Pause and reflect. Some people say take a breath. But this is more than that. Because when you're reflecting in this pause, you need to ask yourself some questions. Um, like, what I'm going to do f going forward to meet th and this challenge, how's it going to change my life? What is going to be different? I'm sure Andrew Luck had to consider that because he is going to have a major change. He's not going to be on the football field come next week when the league opens its regular season. That's going to be a major change for him and his family, as well as all those around him. It's going to be a major change for the other players on his team. And from what I gather, he was a real true teammate. He was a team player, a change to the city of Indianapolis, a change to the, the individual, Mr. Israel, who owns the team, for the coaches, the gentlemen, everybody, a lot of people are affected. There's no doubt about it. So the question, what is this going to change in my life? And does it reflect my values, principles? Is this a good decision basically for me going forward? How does this situation fit in the future, into the big picture, if you will, of my life and my business or my profession in this case? That's the second question. How will it fit? How will I feel about it after I implement the decision? How did all of Andrew Luck, there I go again, Andrew Luck feel the next hour, the next day? It's only been two, three days now since he made the decision, or he made it last week apparently, but it was announced on Saturday. How am I going to feel? Try to think about that a year from now how I'm going to feel by taking this whole new direction in making this difficult decision. And finally, what would I change if I had to do it again? In other words, it led up to this, up to this situation, what I, de I did. In Andrew Luck's case, I think he's been preparing for this position since he was a kid. His father was a professional quarterback, and I suspect he's been playing football. His father's been encouraging him, teaching him, and then he went into the school system, played football, high school, college, and into the professional ranks, okay? What would he do differently, perhaps, that he would now have to reflect on and make this difficult decision? And the next difficult decision, this is important, and I think most folks miss this, is, okay, I'm going to have another difficult decision. Maybe not as one as challenging as this, but we all face these difficult decisions that come up from time to time. What is he going to do? What am I going to do if I'm in his shoes about handling the next difficult decision? What is it that's going to help me think more clearly? In other words, potentially make the right decision. What do I need to do? My point is you're trying to develop a simple mechanism or process that when you face difficulty, a difficult decision that you process it. Yes, I understand the decision that Andrew Luck faced was totally life-changing, but reality is there's smaller circumstances, maybe not as important. Obviously, don't make the news around the world, if you will, and the sporting news in every corner of America. But the fact is, in our life and those around us, in our business, it's just as important to where we are. So I think you make that decision and then you learn from the decision what worked, didn't work, so that that experience, and that's the whole point of this exercise, the experiences stay with you so that as you face decisions, the difficult ones become easier to process. The actual making of the decision may still be a difficult challenge, but at least you come prepared with a process, a mechanism to make those decisions. So I hope that when you're faced with a difficult decision, you'll remember the story of Andrew Luck and why his decision was a brilliant one as it reflects on himself, his family, the sport that he had given his life to. 
because again, the better we handle the difficult situations, the more that we will enjoy and be more successful in our lives. We're gonna take our final break of the day. We come back, I'm gonna to talk to you about the one best consult tip of the week and that uh, is a discussion about video. Video is all around us now. And some of, not all of you use video in your business, but video can be used against you. So we'll have a, hopefully an open and straightforward discussion about video and your business. So please stay with us, we'll be right back. It's all about business on the weekly business hour every Monday at 11 a.m. on Lone Star Community Radio. Want to check out the fastest growing sport in the world? It's right here in Conroe, Texas, and it's roller derby. Conroe Roller Derby is a nonprofit recreational league of women and men who want you to come and check out the fast paced, hard hitting game of roller derby. The Conroe Cutthroats practice at Rainbow Roller Rink on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. You can find our game schedule and more information on our website, www.conroerollerderby.com. Lone Star Community Radio is ready for the summer. If you or anyone you know is looking for a summer internship, Lone Star Community Radio is a great place to learn the radio and TV business. Contact the station at info at IRLoneStar.com or call the station's message line at 936-647-3776. Lone Star Community Radio offers a great opportunity to those interested in learning about the radio world. For those of you who like your partners, your gumbo, and your music salty, well, we're here to help with the music. Julian Shea here, host of Lone Star Country Nights Thursday, your weekly dose of roots and Americana and all the music that makes this part of the country special. We stir in western swing, honky-tonk, Zydeco, Texas blues, outlaw country, and put a pinch of red dirt, and then we smoke it over a slow fire. Then listen to the results Thursday nights on Conroe's 104.5 and 106.1 and worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. An estimated 1 in 10 births will result in a neonatal intensive care stay, also known as the NICU. Overnight, a family can find themselves and their newborn baby in a critical situation. The Mila Foundation financially and spiritually assists families in need. If you would like to volunteer or become a monthly sponsor, please visit us at www.themilafoundation.org. Again, that's www.themilafoundation.org, because every life matters. We have the safest food supply in the world. Strict laws and regulations restrict the usage of hormones, antibiotics, and pesticides within our food supply. Production agriculture practices and technologies such as the use of GMOs, which is not any more or less risky than conventional crop production, has allowed American farmers to produce more food on less acres in environmentally sound ways. Find out more online at pathtotheplate.tamu.edu. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. Helping Texans make lives better. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio, broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. It's all business talk on the weekly business hour every Monday at 11 a.m. right here on Lone Star Community Radio. You've been listening to the Weekly Business Hour. I'm Rick Schiff, your host, and I want to thank you for joining us today. We're in our final segment of today's show. This is where I offer my one best consult tip of the week, and we're going to be talking about everything video here shortly. But before I do that, a couple things. First of all, I want to remind you once again that a complete replay of today's show, video, audio, will be available on Wednesday of this week. You can find it on your favorite social media site, uh, the easiest place, go to Facebook, YouTube, look up the Weekly Business Hour, and you will find a replay there of this show as well as other shows going back up to two years. So I encourage you, use that podcast, videocast route, listen when you have time, and I would appreciate it personally if you would share, if you hear something that makes sense to you, that you would share that program with other business owners that you might know. 
The second thing is I want to make you aware of an educational opportunity. This one geographically is a little far away, but I know it's going to be a wonderful program, and that's why I want to take some time on my show today to mention it. Um, there's Houston Community College, which is all over Houston area, is doing a, a CEO briefing series uh, sponsored by the Silver Fox Advisors. And as you may know, I'm a Silver Fox Advisors uh, advisor, excuse me. And if you want to learn more about Silver Foxes, just go to silverfoxadvisor.org uh, and learn all about what we do as Silver Fox Advisors. But this particular program is coming up Thursday, September 19th, uh, three weeks away. It'll last from 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. It's Strategic Hiring Tools for Business Owners, or CEOs. Uh, and the individuals put in this program, am I know personally, I've known both of them for some time. They're outstanding in their fields. They've got tons of experience. John Yonker and John Sweeney, both of them Silver Fox Advisors, both of these guys are at the top of the game in the fields they represent. And I think they're, they're also very engaging. Uh, they've worked with groups over their career. They know how to make it fun, but also that you walk away with as much knowledge and information that you care to take with you. If you're interested in this program, it'll be held at the Houston Community College Eastside Campus. Uh, that's in Houston area. And if you want more information, write this down if you don't mind. Uh, just contact Margie Pisa, and I'll give you the email address, M Pisa P-I-Z-A, that's M P I Z A at Griffin, that's G-R-I-F-F-I-N-G dot com. If you want more information on it, or you can contact me here at the studio, Rick at IRLoneStar.com. Well, let's take the few minutes we have left and let's talk about video. Uh, I titled this uh, presentation as Video Caught Your Business in the Act. By now, we're all familiar with the hidden video camera uh, that catches people or animals, or babies, uh, or whatever, in the act of doing something typically funny, uh, but often doing something they should be doing. Uh, most everyone has a security camera of their own in their life, whether it be at their home, their business, and it's caught someone doing something they shouldn't uh, related to your home, your business, catch the criminal in the act, and those kind of things. Well, that's a reality, but that's also something that uh, can be used against you uh, but let's look quickly. Uh, my question to you, let's start off. Do you use video in your business? Have you used security cameras, business security cameras? Um, and what happens to those recordings? Uh, do you have a real way to manage it? You know, I've seen people record hour after hour, and then it's something they think took place. Someone gained entry or somebody damaged something, and they have to go through hours of tapes. Well, Every system out there, the new systems, only record when a motion or a sound or something occurs. And they can be fine-tuned so that they disregard certain things such as the rustling in the trees and so on. And this is not a high-level thing. It is something you should consider in your business security if, in fact, you use video. Using it in your marketing today, a huge area, has been for three to five years, but getting still a lot of play, a lot of publicity is using videos to market your business, to advertise your business. You have videos of customers using your products and services or how to uh, use your product and services. Uh, I caught one the other day on pin fishing reels. Uh, they challenged customers who bought their equipment to shoot a video of how they use it. In other words, they're fishing. And in turn, they offer to give them a free pin reel of their choice, which could amount to quite a bit of money. But posting those they have found on their website and other places has really increased their sales, those personal videos. So there's a lot of ways to use video in your business. Most of it is a real positive situation. Uh, have you had employees use video, typically off their cell phones? In video certain things that happen in the business as a joke, uh, but sometimes they're trying to video bad practices or what they consider to be used against you. Third video, third party videos are the ones though that really can hurt. These are being used to catch businesses. Sometimes they're a spoof, but sometimes they aren't. You need to be aware everywhere you go, and this is my philosophy, you're subject to being on video. Your business is subject to being on video. You got to develop a mindset. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Don't be paranoid. But reality for us in today's world, if you go with that 
and you stick with that, it's like I never have to think if I told a lie if I never tell one. Be aware of video. It's all around us. Well, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate the opportunity to present the show to you. And put a note on your calendar next week, Labor Day Monday, we'll be replaying part three of our Soup to Nuts conversation with Ralph D'Onofrio entitled What You Need to Know to Market Your Business. It was a great conversation. If you missed it, I encourage you to listen at 11 o'clock next Monday or go to the podcast video cast. Thank you for joining us, and remember to stay in touch with what's happening here in Montgomery County right here on Lone Star Community Radio. Until next week, stay engaged and keep your focus on what counts in your business. Thanks. <laughs>